This is Private Banovich of the Furba Town the Parachute Regiment, and today he's dressed in what a paratrooper would have worn during the Second World War. Round his neck he has a Selenese scarf. When the air resupply came in, they, they would actually link these together to form some kind of flag to attract the aircraft so they could drop the supplies onto you down below on the ground. Back in World War II, there was no reserve parachute if the canopy failed to open. Okay, cause a bit of a heave to get it to fit. Okay, obviously going into action, it had to carry his equipment. And what we do this is we pack all the equipment itself in the leg bag. It's fitted on the right leg, and then this system here will close around his leg. You've got hand grenades, mines, gammon bombs, extra ammunition, etc. Whatever needed for the task in hand. Weighing up sometimes up to 80 to 100 pounds of equipment in this bag. The parachutist's rifle placed over the paratrooper's head. When he jumped, he would bring the weapon round and he would hold, hold the actual weapon system close to his chest. It's very hot, it's very uncomfortable, very tight around the waist. Uh, not comfortable kit at all, to be honest with you. We're now inside the fuselage of a Dakota aircraft, a very iconic aircraft used with the Airborne Forces throughout the Second World War and right up until the, the mid-50s. How many paratroopers with all of their kit would you be able to fit onto a, a Dakota? OK, and it's present air configuration, it would take about, tw about 28 men all up. Normally, normally slightly less than that, but, but 28 maximum. How long would it actually take for the 28 blokes uh, to actually get out of the plane? I would say about 20 seconds and less. 28 blokes fully kitted, you're going to feel pretty sick and uh, you know, there's planes catching fire, you'd be looking out the window, seeing other planes going down, and you've got to keep your head strong and uh, be a paratrooper and jump out the door. In the small hours of the 6th of June, the parachute regiment took off. 19-year-old Jock Moody was on his first mission. Going over, once it had crossed the French coast and you get ready to stand up and hook up, you think to you, how did I get, what am I doing here, you know? What have I got myself into? And it's then that you, the sooner you can get out, the better, you know. One minute, 30 seconds, red light, green light, and out, out, get on, get out, get out, out into the air over France. One of the Paras' objectives was to capture and destroy a heavily defended German gun battery near the village of Merville. The mission was meticulously planned by 29-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Terence Otway. For a month, he trained 750 men to cross a minefield and knock out the battery's guns. At 12.50 a.m., his paratroopers dropped but they were widely scattered. Only 150 men made it to the rendezvous point. Otway ordered the mission to continue. Sergeant Len Daniels remembers the attack. The colonel, close up to the wire, shouted, get in, get in. And uh, that was when uh, the lid blew off the kettle. <laughs> the Bosch study started to open up. Plenty of muck flying about, trace of incendiary, water bombs, you name it, that was thrown at us. It was chaos, chaos. It was fighting, it was hand to hand, you know. Nearly half the paras were killed or injured, but against the odds, they captured the battery and disabled the German guns. It's unbelievable. How the hell we come to it, I should never know. It was a bit of a fright, no? I dare say I killed one. And that's about all I can remember. Yeah, I did kill one, I know that. But it, it didn't, I had no, I, I had no regrets about that. I was doing a job I'd been trained for. Despite the huge casualties, they took the objective. They adapted and they drove on against ridiculous odds. And I think it's that sort of inspiration of overcoming adversity in extreme ways, uh, which uh, to us epitomizes uh, everything about the regiment, really, and everything about airborne forces. D-Day came at a price. Of the 7,000 men who dropped into Normandy, 
1,623 were wounded, over a thousand killed or missing. When I come back here, I'm very, very proud. I come back and pay my respects to a lot of young men like myself who weren't lucky enough to come back. At the Remembrance Service parades, the regiment will be represented by their mascot, Pegasus. Shetlands, um, for the size, um, are the strongest of all horse breeds. They're sort of short, stocky, which most people would expect from a paratrooper. He can be unpredictable, he's cheeky, tries to get his own way and do stuff, which you could also say a lot of the blokes do as well. Um, so they quite go hand in hand, really. This is his ceremonial dress. Basically, it's got all the battle on us all over it. It's quite weighty, um, but this then defines him as Pegasus then when he's out on parade. When he puts his regalia on, it's as if he knows he's got a job to do then. His temperament changes a little bit. He stops being... Um, I was going to say, no, that's all, but you can't. Can you? Um, he then sort of tends to behave, apart from if he runs away from you, like he did last year. But nine times out of ten, he's OK. In the months after D-Day, the Paras continued the fight to liberate Europe. Field Marshal Montgomery came up with a plan to bring the war to an end by Christmas. 30,000 Allied troops would be deployed to capture seven bridges behind enemy lines in Holland. This would pave the way for Allied tanks to roll into Germany. On September the 17th, 10,000 British soldiers from the 1st Airborne took off. Their mission? To take and hold a road bridge over the Rhine at Arnhem. The Paras would later reenact the events of that day in the film Theirs is the Glory, a mixture of drama and documentary. It shows how the Paras captured the north end of the bridge they then found themselves surrounded by two heavily armoured German panzer divisions. Everybody expected it to be a doddle, but those people who'd been in action before knew different. When the Germans' backs were up against the wall, they are pretty resilient. Everybody thought the Germans were on the run, but they could turn on a sixpence. Uh, and they did. People were being cut down left, right and centre. There was bodies lying all over the place. The 1st Battalion had run out, virtually run out of ammunition. The grenades were gone. There's just no defence against a tank firing at point-blank range through the windows of a house. The Paras had orders to hold the bridge for 48 hours until ground troops arrived. But the ground troops never reached this bridge. It has gone down in history as the legendary Bridge Too Far. The Paras managed to hold out for three days and four nights. Then their ammunition ran out and they were overwhelmed by the Germans. As we got smaller and smaller, we left people who must be dead and dying in the bits that we had to get out of. Yes, it was not, not the happiest day of my life. No, no, it was, it was bad. Of the 10,000 men who went to Arnhem, only 2,163 made it back. The Battle of Arnhem's the typical parachute regiment ethos. It embodies everything that we hold dear. You know, the guys fought together. Um, to the last man, they were surrounded, outnumbered, outgunned, and still at the end of the day, they managed to hold out for days. Arnhem's extremely significant to the parachute regiment. They were jumping in to the relative unknown in terms of enemy positions and where they were, and they kept taking the fight forward to the enemy with both aggression, motivation, and determination, which are the three qualities we aspire to have today. I'm going to ask you some questions now, then, OK, about regimental history. Learning regimental history is an essential part of being a modern paratrooper. 
What was the operational name for Arnhem? Market Garden, sir. Yeah, Operation Market Garden. What was the name of the conflict in the Falklands? Operation Corporate, sir. Exactly. The history does motivate you when you're on tour um, because we've got a reputation to live up to. The things that have gone before us, the people that have gone before us and the things that they've accomplished against great odds. And it does really get the guys geared up and ready to go. Get listening. Stand down. Hey! Once you shout out your P company number, you have to shout out, sir. He then tell you if you've passed or failed. In Catterick, it's the final day of P Company. If you pass, you stay where you are. If you fail, you turn to the right, salute, and march off to the rear, where Court Minchel will wait for you there. Number two. Sir! Pass. Sir! Number three. Sir! Pass. Sir! Number 14. Sir! Pass. Sir! Number 16. Sir! Fail. One hundred and five started. Fifty-nine passed. Congratulations. Thanks, okay. Well done. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Radcliffe, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Welcome you. officially to the Parachute Regiment. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, no, well done. When I put the berry on, uh, it was total relief, uh, pride. You, you can feel adrenaline pumping through your body. Uh, it's something that you've wanted for such a long time. Right now, I honestly feel the best I've ever felt. It's the proudest moment of my life, having just come off the berry parade and received the maroon berry. Now we are actually part of the parachute regiment, and we can wear the maroon berry with pride. Since World War II, the Paras have been one of the most active regiments in the British Army. From Suez to the Falkland Islands, from Kosovo to Sierra Leone, they've been deployed in nearly every British military conflict. Merville Barracks in Colchester, the men are receiving campaign medals for their latest battle honour, Afghanistan. Here to congratulate them, the regiment's Colonel-in-Chief, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. The regiment's veterans are also present at the parade. We come here to support the lads from the regiment because we've all been through what they've been through before. You're never an ex-para, you're always a para. And when I joined the paras, it changed my life. It made me realize that I was somebody. I'd become a member of, of the elite, and I owe a, a tremendous debt of gratitude to this berry and this cap badge. In 1950, just 10 years after they were formed, Field Marshal Montgomery celebrated the parachute regiment's special place in the British Army. What matter of men? are these who wear the maroon red beret. They are firstly all volunteers and are then toughened by hard physical training. They have jumped from the air and by doing so have conquered fear. They have shown themselves to be as tenacious and determined in defence as they are courageous in attack. They are in fact men apart. Every man an emperor. <laughs> <laughs> 